Hey, welcome to the Undiscovered Games video podcast, where we take a look at the lesser known board games of the world and share those with you. Now, today is going to be a little different because we're centered around a very popular board game called Dominion. And I know what you're saying, Dominion, that's not an undiscovered game. Why are we talking about Dominion? Well, we're not necessarily talking about just Dominion. We're talking about the 15 Dominion expansions that have come out over the past 15 years. Those are lesser known games. You know, I can't tell you how many times somebody has looked at my game shelf and they see all the Dominion boxes and they say, I didn't even know Dominion had all these expansions or, you know, why do you need so many expansions? Well, the answer is you don't. You don't need every one of these expansions. However, as somebody who has kept a complete collection over the years, and as someone who still plays Dominion and still enjoys Dominion as much now as I did you know, 12 years ago when I first discovered it, I feel like I have some insight to offer as far as, you know, where to begin. I still consider myself a casual Dominion player. I'm not a super serious Dominion player, so I wouldn't consider this a video for the hardcore Dominion people out there. This is more for, you know, just people who have played Dominion, maybe want to start expanding their collection a little bit, or maybe you've never played Dominion and you don't even know where to begin. This is just a casual player player's point of view, you know, which expansions I really like, which ones I don't like, and also my favorite card from each box, as well as my wife's favorite card from each box. I'm just throwing that in there for fun. Uh, we're going to have fun with this video, but also maybe provide you a starting point as far as where to look when you want to expand your world of Dominion. And Dominion is such a pure and clean deck building game. It was the original deck building game. And once you start mixing these boxes together, it just never gets old. So let's look at my least favorite expansions first. This is my red level. And these are ones I just don't recommend. There's still some good cards, but I would stay away from these starting out. Number 17 overall is Alchemy. This came out in 2000. 10 and there's just not much in this box it kind of looks like a bag of potato chips with all that empty space in there but what this game attempted to do was add a new currency to the game called potions and it's like a different type of treasure card normally you only have copper silver and gold to spend now you can buy potions to add into your deck and then you buy cards that have potion costs on the bottom left the problem is this is the only dominion expansion that was ever released with cards that have potion costs so you almost have to play this by itself or with one other expansion for it even to be worth your time to set out the potion cards and then take turns buying potion cards to your deck. It just mucks up the game and it really just isn't necessary. There are two cards that my wife and I like. My favorite card is the Possession, which is a very fun card. It's a little, it's a little absurd, but it lets you possess the player to your left. They take a turn with their cards, but you make all the decisions for them and you get their stuff. And I just like that idea. It's a fun concept. My wife likes the apothecary there. Plus one card, plus one action, and potentially get more coppers and potions into your hand from your draw deck. Fun fact, that card is illustrated by Ryan Lockett, who is now a very famous game designer and artist, so it's kind of neat to see his work in an older game. But overall, Alchemy just fell flat for us. We hardly ever used this, so I just don't think you need it. Another expansion I don't think is worth it is Nocturne. This came out in 2017. It has kind of a vampire, darker theme to it, which really isn't my style anyway. But aside from that, I don't like that this game adds a new phase to the game called the night phase. On the top left, you'll see a night card, and that can only be played during the night phase. Normally in Dominion, you have your action phase and then your buy phase. Well, now you have a night phase. So they're like action cards, but they don't count as actions and they get played during the night phase. I just think it's a weird concept for all types of Dominion players. Players who are familiar with Dominion, you know, we like the clean flow and the smoothness of this game. This adds an extra layer that 
that I don't think is necessary. And then if you're trying to explain this to new gamers, it's so easy to explain, you know, your action phase and then your buy phase. Well, now you have to explain the night phase and it just gets confusing. Another new concept in the Nocturne box are these Fate and Doom action cards. And there are several of these in the box. These are just two examples here. But these refer to the boons and the hexes. So you're going to have two separate decks. You're going to shuffle them up. And there's a pile of hex cards, which are bad events, basically. And there's a pile of boons, which are good things. And these are just like a one-time event that happens when you play those action cards. They can happen to you you or your opponent sometimes, and you just have to follow the instructions on the card, but these cards themselves don't go into your deck or anything. They just give you a prompt and you follow that, and I'm fine with that. It doesn't slow the game down drastically or anything like that, so this addition is fine. It's nothing super memorable, but I'm okay with that. Now let's talk about our favorite cards in this box because this is something I actually like about Nocturne. My wife and I both agree we like every one of these heirloom cards and this is another new concept for this expansion. This is something I wish they would have focused more on instead of adding all those night cards to the box. They should have added more of these heirloom cards because this is kind of neat. So if you notice on the fool there for example there's a banner at the bottom that says heirloom lucky coin. That refers to this lucky coin treasure card. Every player gets to start with one of those in their starting deck and you just replace one of your starting coppers with these heirloom cards and depending on you know which of these come out in the game you could potentially have multiple of these starting heirlooms instead of starting coppers. This is the type of stuff I like to see in expansions. It takes you know what you're used to seeing and just changes it slightly enough to give you some variety without over complicating and over confusing things. So that's a concept I wish they would have developed more. In fact, I think they could have made the entire expansion based on that idea instead of that night phase, but they chose to go that route. There's only six of those heirloom cards, and that's just not enough to elevate this higher on my list. Coming in at number 15 is Cornucopia from 2011. This is still in my red level, so I do not recommend this. This is another half-empty box, or a potato chip box, as I like to call it. And it's not necessarily a bad expansion, but it's just very forgettable. One of the new ideas comes from this Young Witch card, which requires you to set up an additional Kingdom card pile at the beginning of the game. And basically, any card from that pile is going to protect you against the Young Witch. It sort of acts like the moat from the base game, except it requires extra setup and it just adds extra layers that aren't necessary. Just play with the moat instead. Now, another new concept is the tournament card. And this one we actually like. In fact, the tournament is our favorite card in this box. My wife and I both agree this card is the best one in this expansion. And what this does is potentially give you, but also other players, access to a free duchy or a free prize from the prize pile. And this is kind of cool because there are five unique cards that only you can get when someone plays the tournament card. And there's only one copy of each of these, so you would be the only player that has this ability. Some of these are very powerful. For instance, the one on the end gives you two things to do, one of which is gain four silvers. So those prize cards are kind of fun to go for, I will admit, but that's just one card in this entire deck and it's just not enough to make this a very good expansion. Keeping the list moving to number 14, I'm going to lump together all these little mini update packs as well as all the promo cards. I'm just going to put those all together here because I don't think any of these are absolutely necessary. These little update packs are just so if you had the expansion, you could update to the second edition when they reprinted them. So I would just get the expansion. Don't worry about these little update packs. And then finally, the promo cards. They've put out several over the years, and there are some good ones. Ones, but in my opinion, it's just not worth it to seek those out individually. I do have a favorite, and it is the Black Market, and my wife's favorite is the Envoy. These are both promo cards, and the Black Market is cool because you get to set up a Black Market deck of Kingdom cards that are not in the supply. And then, as you play the Black Market, you get to reveal three cards from that deck and buy one, and that gives you access to a card that nobody else can get access to. That is a cool concept. 
concept, if you're going to get any of the promo cards, I would recommend the black market. But as much as I like that idea, we hardly ever use the black market because of that extra setup time. It just gets a little fiddly. So that's why it's just not that essential. My wife likes the Envoy here. He lets you reveal the top five cards of your deck. The player to your left chooses one to discard, and then you draw the rest. So there's hardly any risk there, and you're going to get four extra cards in your hand. That's kind of a cool card. And that is the end of my red level. Now we're going to move into the yellow level. These are all expansions I think are worth considering, but not essential. They're all pretty good, and I'm still counting down from least favorite to most favorite. So Empires from 2016 is my least favorite in the expansions that are worth considering. This game adds debt tokens, and if you notice on the bottom left there, it's a hexagon where the cost is. That means you have to take that much debt to get that card, and you take these thick, chunky metal debt coins, which are really cool. I really like these coins, but you take those on, and then you're not allowed to buy anything else until you pay off your debt, like on a future buy phase or something. And a lot of times, players forget to do this. It's easy to forget when you're used to just buying cards cards on your turn, a lot of times players will take two or three turns before they even realize, oh wait, I had debt I had to pay first, I wasn't even allowed to buy those cards, let's try to undo the past three rounds of the game, and that happens quite a bit, unfortunately, because I like the concept, but in practice, it just sort of, again, mucks up the flow of a smooth game, and that's unfortunate. Now, there are some cool things in this. For instance, we see the return of these heavy-duty metal shields, which are victory point tokens. These first appeared in a different expansion, which I'll talk about later, but there are several action cards in this box that let you collect these tokens, and these are ways to score points without clawing logging up your deck with victory cards. There's a whole new event deck. Now the events are also from another expansion, but this gives you more variety, so I'll talk about those later. And I believe this was the first expansion to introduce landmarks. There's a whole deck of these green landmark cards, and basically you flip one randomly at the beginning of your game, and this is going to modify or affect scoring for everybody for this specific game of Dominion. So every time you play, that's going to be slightly different, and we almost always play with landmarks, even if we don't have any other kingdom cards from this Empire's box. The landmark idea is a fabulous addition to Dominion, and I recommend always playing with a landmark. Our favorite cards in the box are these castles. My wife and I both agreed on this as well. This is one supply pile, and the castles sort of evolve as you get deeper into the pile. So the pile contains all these different castles, and they're all victory point cards, and they all get better and more expensive, but you're sort of racing your opponents because there's only one or two of each type, and that adds a little twist on like racing toward getting certain cards. Next up on my list is Adventures. This is number 12 overall for me. This came out in 2015. It comes with all these extra little tokens and tavern mats. Several of the action cards in the game are called reserves, and these refer to placing them on your tavern mat, and then at a later time you can call these cards to activate something once a certain condition is met or whenever you want to call those cards. So it's similar to a duration card, which we haven't really talked about yet, but it sort of stays out on your tavern, and it doesn't clog your deck, and then later you can call on it to do something. And that works fine. There's also these travelers, which are basically like people that upgrade throughout the game. You can discard to get a higher level of these people. The problem is a lot of times the game will end before you can really develop these travelers into their highest potential, and I wish you could get to those higher levels a little bit easier. But still, that's a pretty cool idea. I could just do without it. Next, we have the event cards, and this is where this expansion really broke new ground. This was the first expansion to have events, and the way these work, at the beginning of the game, you're going to flip over two event cards, and those will be in play the rest of the game. Players can purchase purchase events during their buy phase instead of buying a card into their deck. So the events all do a bunch of different things, and the players can trigger those events by paying the money during their buy phase. And that does count as your buy, but sometimes it's nice to do something without clogging up your deck. So that's what the events let you do. My wife and I have a favorite card in here. My favorite card is the duplicate card, and this is a reserve card, so it goes onto your tavern mat. And then later, when you gain a card costing 
passing up the six money, you can call on the duplicate card to get another copy of that card. So you get two for the price of one. My wife likes the hireling card. It's a duration that stays out for the rest of the game. Every turn for the rest of the game, you get plus one card at the start of your turn. That is powerful. So Adventures is a very good expansion through and through. I think some of the ideas in this were refined a little bit and done better in later expansions, but it's a good one. There are a lot of these little tokens in this box, and these just refer to action cards that let you, you know, put this token on a supply pile and it affects that pile, or, you know, flip this token over and next turn you get plus one card and things like that. You know, it's okay. It doesn't wow me. Um, I don't really like having these extra cardboard tokens to store in the box, but it's fine. Next up on the list is Menagerie from 2020. I really like this expansion because it doesn't do too much. Much, but it gives you a lot of new cards. It also gives you these exile mats, which work similar to the tavern mats we just talked about. You can send cards into exile, get them out of your deck for a few turns, and then they return to your deck. They get rescued later. This box also contains more event cards. That's always a welcome addition in my opinion. However, one of those event cards in this photo does not belong with Menagerie. If you can name that card, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So anyway, the newest concept in Menagerie is these cards right here. It's the way of the otter, the way of the butterfly. There's all these different animals. They all have beautiful artwork, by the way. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to flip over one or two of these, whatever the players decide. And basically throughout the game, instead of taking the action on your action cards, you can instead take the action that's showing on the way cards. So they offer you a choice for every action card you play in the entire game. And I think this is a really neat idea. This is the type of stuff I like in expansions. It's a very simple, subtle addition, and it gives players a little bit more flexibility. And it's just fun to try out all these different animals. There's a really big deck of these in the box. This is just a few examples. Let's talk about our favorite cards. Mine is the Animal Fair. It's plus four money, plus one buy per empty supply pile. But what I really like is that instead of paying the card's cost, you can instead just trash an action card from your hand to gain the animal fare during your buy phase. I just think that's a cool way to get a plus four money card into your deck. My wife, on the other hand, likes the Mastermind. This is a duration card that says at the start of your next turn, you may play an action card from your hand three times. Now, of course, you have to get lucky and hope the right action card comes up next turn, but that's pretty powerful. Next up on the list, we're in the top 10 now, and this is Renaissance from 2018. I really like the artwork and the colors in this. It's very vibrant. You get wooden cubes and thick, heavy metal coins, and then you get these player mats. At the top are coffers, and at the bottom are villagers. Throughout the game, you'll play action cards that let you place coins onto either the coffers or the villagers. And this lets you save up coins, and then you can spend them later, either for money or for more actions. Now, this this is a very cool idea, but just be warned, players will save up coins and they will unleash monster turns later in the game. And while that can be fun, it can also lead to a very swingy pace. You know, you don't really have as good of an idea of when the game's going to end because players will save up their coins and then unleash this big turn and buy like three provinces in a single turn and end the game right then and there. So I'm not completely sold on this idea, especially at two players where you have fewer provinces provinces and the game will just end really, really quickly. But sometimes it's kind of fun to do that. In Renaissance, there are these project cards. At the beginning of the game, you're going to reveal two of these randomly, and these are special abilities that players can invest in for the rest of the game. Basically, during your buy phase, you're going to pay the cost on the project and then place your cube on that project, indicating that you have that special ability. So if you're the type of gamer that likes special abilities and special powers, definitely check out Renaissance because there's another way to get special powers, and that's these artifact 
cards. These are like hot potato cards that get passed around the table. Players sort of fight over these and their special abilities as long as you're in possession of these artifacts. And our favorite card in the box has one of these. The action card is called Swashbuckler and she gives you plus three cards and potentially a coin on your coffers mat. Then if you have four coins on your coffers mat, you get to take the treasure chest. The treasure chest gives you a powerful ability. At the start of your buy phase, you get a free gold. So as long as you have the treasure chest, you know, until somebody else plays the swashbuckler and qualifies for the treasure chest, you're going to get a free gold every turn. And as you can imagine, there are some great back and forth battles between the players to get that treasure chest. So just be aware with Renaissance, you're going to have some swingy games that end quickly. And other than that, it's very fun. I like this expansion. All right, moving up to number nine, we have Hinterlands from 2011. This is another very pretty expansion. There's a lot of great artwork in here, not a lot of new concepts. They play around with the different types of cards, like there's treasure and reaction cards, or victory action cards, victory reaction cards. So they do a lot of that, and there's a lot of victory cards in this game, as evidenced by the green box. So they did a lot of experimenting with different types of victory cards. This this was kind of the first expansion to really dive into that. But aside from that, there's not much new, just a lot of really good cards. And there's just a nice big set of new Dominion cards. My favorite is the Farmland. It's worth two victory points, but when you buy this, you get to trash a card from your hand and gain a card costing two more than that. So I've used the farmland to trash a gold and then get a province worth six points. Plus I get the two points from the farmland. So that's like an eight point turn. I like that. My wife likes the stables, which is very straightforward. You may discard a treasure. If you do, you get plus three cards and plus one action. That's a great card. So all in all, Hinterlands is a very solid expansion. Again, not essential, but you can't go wrong with this one. It doesn't do anything weird or annoying. It just gives you more great cards. Coming in at number eight on the list is Guilds from 2013. This is another one of those smaller boxes where it's like only half full. So that knocks some points off, but it does give you more metal coins and it lets you use metal coins like money. And this is really the only expansion that lets you use coins strictly as money. It doesn't have to go to the coffers mat first. It doesn't have to go on a reserve or anything like that. You can just get coins and spend them like money. And I kind of wish there were more expansions that did that because it keeps the flow of the game very smooth, except the coins are nice because they don't clog up your hand. There's just something satisfying about playing a card, taking some coins, and then using those coins in conjunction with your money cards to get some bigger buys. This game works really well with the Prosperity expansion, which I'll talk about later, and I just think Guilds uses the metal coins a little bit better than Renaissance does. And that's mainly because the Guilds cards don't give you a ton of coins. It doesn't make it super easy to get a lot of coins, but it's nice to have coins saved up for a future turn. So it gives you that satisfaction of saving up, getting a bigger buy later. It's just not quite as intense, not quite as over the top with these huge swingy turns like you get in Renaissance. So I like that more streamlined approach to the coins that you get in guilds. The only problem is there's just not a lot of cards in this box. My favorite card is the Soothsayer, which lets you just gain a gold and each other player gains a curse. It's a mean card and you get a gold. They get to draw a card still. My wife loves loves the Baker card. It's very simple. Plus one card, plus one action, and take a coin. So if you get a lot of Baker cards coming up in a row, plus one card, plus one action, plus one coin, plus one card, plus one action, plus one coin, you can rack up a lot of coins to use right away if you want. So you got to be careful when the Baker's in the game and make sure one player, <coughs> my wife, isn't hoarding every Baker card early on in the game. You really got to watch that. But anyway, next up is Dark Ages from 2012. This is number seven on my list. I really like Dark Ages. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Dominion expansion as far as number of cards that are in the box. But what Dark Ages focuses on is cards that let you trash and get special functions when you trash cards. So if you're the type of player that likes to thin out your Dominion deck and play with a real thin deck, this might be an expansion to look at. This also comes with three three new starting cards, 
These replace your estates. So you start with these three shelter cards instead. And that just offers some nice variety during the starting hands. Some cards make you take ruins and the ruins are kind of cool because they reference the old base game cards. It's like the ruined market and the ruined library. And they're just worse versions of those cards and they clog up your deck a little bit. So Dark Ages doesn't do too much new stuff. I will say this caters a little bit more toward more experienced Dominion players. Some of the text on the cards is a little bit more wordy. So if you're not familiar with Dominion, this one might be a little bit out of your league starting out. But still, Dark Ages is a great way to add a ton of new cards and variety to Dominion without having to learn too much new stuff. So I like that. My favorite card in here is the Poor House because it only costs one coin. And when you get it, it's worth plus four money but then you have to reveal your hand and you lose one money per treasure card you have in your hand. Now, if you play like me where you wanna thin out your deck early and get rid of those coppers, the poor house can be a very tempting card to go for and develop your strategy around. My wife likes the knights deck. There's a whole deck of knights and you shuffle them up and they're all different, but it's one supply pile. So you mix them up and you show the top card and that's the only card you're allowed to buy when you buy from that supply. Once you buy a card, the next card gets flipped. So these are all different and they're all pretty cool in their own regard. And my wife likes that idea of, you know, being the only player that gets access to that card. So that's pretty neat. Next on my list, this might surprise some of you, but this is the newest Dominion expansion called Plunder. This just came out earlier this year. Part of the reason this is so high on my list is because it's still new to me. I've played only a couple times so far and I have very good first impressions. It has these trait cards these are okay. You add these to a supply pile at the beginning of the game, and it makes that supply pile a certain trait. So the gondola cards here would be considered cursed. And every time you gain a gondola, you would have to obey the trait card below it. What I really like in this box is all these new duration cards. Now, duration cards are the orange cards that stay out in front of you and then the trigger on a later turn. And this is nothing new. In fact, duration cards seem to be a crowd favorite because almost every expansion now that comes out, at least recently, has had new duration cards. It's just this box is orange and I think they were going for just a ton of new duration cards. And that's really cool. There's also a new event deck so lots of new variety there for events that you can buy and finally there's a big stack of these loot cards and the loot cards are all these really good treasure cards that get shuffled up together put in a face down pile and then when you get a card that says gain a loot you get the top card from that pile and you don't know exactly what it's going to be but it's probably going to be pretty good now it's kind of hard to pick a favorite card because this is still pretty new to us but i really like the quartermaster this is a duration card that stays out for the rest of the game and at the start of each turn for the rest of the game you can gain a card costing up to four and place it on the quartermaster or take a card from the quartermaster and put it into your hand. A lot of flexibility there for only five money to buy that. My wife obviously likes this King's Cash card because you get to play a treasure from your hand three times. What's not to love with that card? The only problem is it costs seven money to buy it. So that's going to be a little bit later in the game and you're probably not going to get to use it as much. Still a great card. Okay, we're in the top five now, and number five is Intrigue. This was the very first Dominion expansion. Technically, this wasn't even an expansion. This was released as a follow-up to Dominion, and it's a standalone game because it has all the starting cards that you need to play Dominion. But this was released as a more advanced version of Dominion, as well as a way to expand Dominion up to five or six players. Intrigue doesn't do anything drastically different from the base game, but it does have a few of of these combination cards like mixing action and victory cards together or treasure and victory cards but honestly it's mostly just similar cards that you'll find in the base game of dominion but just more of them this has that old school dominion flavor throughout you know just very simple straightforward cards but they all work really well together they work well with the base game they work well with the newest expansions it's just a very solid box and i think of this as sort of the twin brother of Dominion. You know, you just can't go wrong with it. 
For some reason, my favorite card here is the Mining Village. I don't know why, but I always invest in this. It's plus one card, plus two actions, and then you may trash this immediately for plus two money. And I just feel like that's a good deal for only costing four. And it's nice to have that flexibility to trash that card anytime it comes up. And it's cool to combine multiple Mining Villages. You know, you can get a lot of money, trash like three of them for six money. That's pretty good. Nobles is my wife's favorite card that lets you choose plus three cards or plus two actions, which is great, and it gives you victory points at the end without clogging your deck. Coming in strong at number four is another new expansion called Allies. This just came out last year, and this one really blew me away because of its simplicity. You know, before Allies came along, I feel like Dominion had put out a lot of expansions that tried to do too much, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like they went back to basics here. They include some metal coins, and the coins act as favor tokens, and you can spend those to activate these ally cards. Now, there's only going to be one ally card per game, but there's a whole deck of them that are going to come out differently every time, and they do some really cool things. And these, you know, you're going to have cards that allow you to get favor tokens that you can then spend to activate the allies. The allies just have some really neat concepts, but it's very simple and streamlined. I feel like they kind of took some ideas from previous expansions and really simplified those ideas into a much easier to understand concept, which are these ally cards. Now, the game does have these rotating supply piles. There's not a bunch of these, but basically it's one supply pile and it has four different action cards mixed in there that you can rotate and control which ones are on top. That's an okay idea. It is a little fiddly and there's only a couple of those, so it doesn't take away too much. But what I really like about allies is I just feel like it's it's more of a simpler expansion. It harkens back to the older days of Dominion, and it kind of does a little bit of everything. There's some duration cards, there's some new treasures and things like that. And this may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but I just feel like this expansion sort of made Dominion relevant again. You know, this is a 2022 expansion, and it doesn't try to do too much. And that's what I really like about Plunder as well. You know, for a while, I felt like they were getting a little bit crazy with these expansions. But now, you know, they really toned it down a little bit and just went back to basics. And I think that's important for new gamers to still give Dominion a chance. For as old as it is, I think it still holds up. But it's just hard to stand out in today's market. So I digress. I'm just trying to say I really like the last two Dominion expansions. My favorite card in Allies, and probably one of my favorite Dominion cards of all time, is the Broker. The Broker is only four to buy that, and it lets you trash a card from your hand, and then you get to choose plus a card, plus an action, plus a money, or plus a favor token per coin that that card costs that you trash. I love Dominion cards that give you that much flexibility, and that's why I also like my wife's favorite card, the Specialist. That lets you play an action or a treasure from your hand and then choose to either play it again or get a copy of it. Those are great choices. Awesome, awesome cards throughout Allies, and I do realize this is only a little over a year old, so some of this might still be the honeymoon stage, but I do believe Allies is that good of a Dominion expansion, and definitely one I recommend checking out. Okay, we've made it into the green level here, and these are all the expansions I would consider essential in my opinion. Now, again, this is my opinion. This is from my experience. You might like completely different ones, but that's why I made this video. Hopefully, you can make up your mind after watching this. Number three, this was kind of a weird area because I felt like I had to include the base game in this list because the base game is essential to play Dominion. You need those cards. Now, the base card box here is really handy. This came out in 2012 and then they reprinted it with the updated artwork, but even this version has this beautiful artwork for all the money cards, all the potions, the curses, everything you need to play Dominion with any expansion. I really underestimated how often I would use this little base cards box. You know, if you're having a Dominion game night and you have three expansions you're using, 
sometimes it's nice to not lug along the big base game box. You know, you know all your cards you need are in this little yellow box. And I originally bought it just to get this updated artwork from that original edition artwork. But they have since updated the artwork in the second edition. So really, if you have this second edition of the base game, your artwork is going to look like this. You're going to be fine. You don't really need that little yellow box. However, it is very, very convenient. And for an extra 15 or 20 bucks, if you're going to be playing a lot of Dominion, you will use that little base cards box way more than you think you will. But originally, I just bought it for the better artwork. Now, of course, you can get that in the second edition. If you notice, my edition of the base cards does not have the numbers printed real big on them. In the new printing of the base cards, the box looks the same, but they use the new second edition edition artwork with the bigger numbers. So you kind of have to make the decision of which one you prefer. But all in all, one combination or the other, you know, the base game or the base cards are going to be an essential box that you have to buy. And one more thing to note, if you remember, I said Intrigue comes with all the money cards you need to play. Well, that was the first edition of Intrigue. The second edition of Intrigue does not come with all the money cards. So you're going to have to get the base game in some form shown here, either the original edition, the second edition, or the base cards. Hopefully, I've sort of provided some information there to help you decide and make that decision. But I will say, the base game cards are still excellent. And that's why I have this rated at number three on my list, because those cards are from 15 years ago, but they still hold up today. My favorite is the throne room. I love the throne room. You choose an action card from your hand and play it twice. Obviously, there's a little risk there. You got to get the right action card in your hand with the throne room, but I love that one. Market is my wife's favorite card. She loads up on the markets and those are just plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy and plus one money. It's kind of the best of all worlds and she still loves that card. It's one of her favorite all time Dominion cards. So that's where I had to include the base game or the base cards somewhere on my list and I think it is essential. Next up is Prosperity at number two. This is from 2010, one of the early expansions. And this box focuses on acquiring lots of money and spending lots of money. This is a very feel-good game to add into your Dominion. It also includes these beautiful player mats that do different things, as well as the Victory Point Shields, which we talked about earlier. Those give you points without clogging your deck, and some more metal coins. Most importantly, though, Prosperity is known for adding in the Platinum money money card and the colony victory card. These are huge ways to build up your money and to get points. Now the rules change slightly because now the game can end either by provinces running out or by colonies running out. And you know, these two cards really change dominion for us for the better because now we only play having Platinums and Colonies in every game of Dominion that we play. Because you have that extra tough decision. When you get nine money, do you buy a province or do you invest in the, the Platinum money card to then get a Colony later? It's such a tough, simple decision and that little extra layer makes all the difference. And that's why I consider Prosperity an essential expansion. Now, you can get the Platinum and the Colony cards from those base cards. That, that does include the Platinum and the Colony. So you technically wouldn't have to get Prosperity, but you might as well because every card in this box is amazing. We could not pick one favorite card each. We both agree that the King's Court is probably the best card in the box because it's basically the throne room on steroids. You can choose an action card from your hand and play it through three times instead of just two times. Huge. Next, we have the Grand Market, another one of my favorite cards. This is just a better version of the market from the base game, except they don't even let you buy it if you have any coppers. So they're like, get out of here with your coppers. You're not allowed at the Grand Market. And then we have the Bishop. I love this card. Plus one money, plus one uh, victory point token. And you get to trash a card from your hand and take victory point tokens worth half of that cost. 
list. So that card is an awesome way to thin out your deck and get some victory points without clogging your deck. Next, we have my wife's favorites, the Monument, just plus two money and plus a victory point token. Very straightforward. And then the Bank. I love the Bank as well. It adds one money value to every treasure card you have in play, including the Bank. So huge ways to get money. And that's why I love Prosperity. It just is such a feel-good game. You know, you really build up to try to get those colonies. You're almost like, you know, I don't need provinces anymore. I'm going for the colonies. And it really just, it's so rewarding rewarding to build up your deck a little bit, get those platinum money cards. Prosperity is very close to being my favorite Dominion expansion of all time. But let's talk about my favorite. It is Seaside. This was from 2009, one of the earliest expansions, and Seaside has beautiful artwork, and this was the first expansion to include these chunky Dominion coins that we see in so many other expansions, but this was the first to do it. You also get these beautiful player mats that correspond to various action cards like the pirate ship, love those. And this was the first game to introduce duration cards, the orange cards that stay out in front of you and do something at a later turn. The game also includes these metal embargo tokens, and when you play the embargo action card, you get to put a token on top of one of the supply piles, and it puts an embargo on that pile, so anybody who buys from that has to also take a curse. It's kind of a mean little addition to the game, but I love that card and those tokens. But let me say, every card in Seaside is that good. I could not pick a favorite. We kind of randomly picked a couple here because... To me, that's what makes Seaside so good is not only did it break new ground with duration cards and metal coins and things like that, but every single card in this box is good and it has beautiful artwork. I love everything about Seaside. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. Now let's talk about some of our favorite cards. I love the treasure map and my wife likes the wharf. The treasure map says trash this and another copy of treasure map. And if you can do that, you get four gold cards and put them on top of your deck. That is a press your luck style card. It's a risk reward, but when you can make the treasure map work. It is so satisfying. My wife likes the wharf. That's a duration card. Very simple. Just gives you plus two cards and plus one buy now and on your next turn. And I love the art on that card as well. The pirate ship is a fun card. You can either attack other players and make them trash treasures, and then you get to add coins to your pirate ship, or you can use the coins that are on your pirate ship as money toward your buy. That is a very mean card, I will warn you, but it fits nicely into this nautical pirate theme, and it would go nicely with the new game Plunder as well. Uh, the island is very cool. You get to set that aside along with another card from your hand, and those go onto the island for the rest of the game. So you could get like those starting estates maybe out of your deck for the rest of the game, and they still score you points, but they don't clog up your deck. I love the island. Finally, we have the salvager. It's plus one buy, trash a card from your hand, and plus the money that's equal to the trash card. Finally, the merchant ship there. My wife loves that one. It's just plus two money now and at the start of the next turn. So a lot of these duration cards in Seaside are very straightforward. And that's one of the reasons I like it so much because it's it still has that old school Dominion feel. They don't try to do too much with the cards. It's just very simple, very straightforward. But every card in Seaside is awesome. Seaside Prosperity, I would definitely start there if you're looking to expand your Dominion, and then just go through my list in that yellow section of my list and find some that might appeal to you. Again, I don't think you can really go wrong with any expansion. Even some of those really bad ones I talked about have redeeming qualities, and I don't think you can go wrong with those. But I just wanted to make a ranking list as someone who's played a ton of Dominion, as somebody who's played every single card ever made. I just felt like I was somewhat qualified to speak on this and rank these and share this with you. Again, I have not gone through and analyzed every card combo out there or every you know box, which one works best with the other 
other boxes. And you know, one thing I think is fun to try, mix two boxes that you don't like, mix them together and see how that works. And sometimes we do that just for fun and it works. One time we mixed Nocturne and Empires and it seemed like that worked pretty well. So you just never know with Dominion, but I wanted to make a list just to give you a general overview. You know, I think you would definitely want to start with Prosperity and Seaside and then go from there. So that's my two cents on Dominion and, uh, well, I guess I should say my two coppers on Dominion. Uh, it's such a great game that my wife and I have enjoyed for 12 years now, and there's a reason we still enjoy it because I think it's that good, and I think a lot of people miss out because they don't add in any expansions. This is a game that really does require some expansions to stay, you know, interesting. So hopefully that helps a lot of you out there. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like the channel, Make sure you're subscribed and like, comment, uh, share this video with all your board gaming friends. As long as I see my subscribers going up, I will continue to make content like this. And if you want to support the channel more, there's a PayPal link in the description below. You can donate any amount you like, and that just helps keep this channel alive so I can continue to share these hidden gems, lesser known board games with all of you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.